right after the Batigan and Brown proposal for a possible ninth planet was was put out in, in 2016, different teams of scientists rushed to understand if it could possibly be of a captured origin. And so they simulated the birth cluster of the sun in great detail and asked as a function of abundance of free-floating planets, how likely is it that you would capture a planet? Now, for five to 10 Earth mass planets, quite unlikely was the consensus. But in this new paper, I combine that work with these new microlensing results, which show that there should be a huge number of Mars-sized exoplanets, which are just floating in space. And what I found was really striking. What I found was that we should expect, based on current statistics, one or maybe even a few small terrestrial planets lurking out there in the outer solar system. And so now the question is, can we find them? Now, that uh, seems to me to be a fairly straightforward process with the uh, LSST, Fair Rubin Observatory, seeing first light, I believe, this coming year. Then that what you would do, you know, used to look for this as a all sky survey telescope like that. But is it within the range of the telescope to see a Mars sized object at great distance like that? Yeah, so you're right. LSST is definitely the, the tool that will be most powerful in this case. The issue is this kind of planet would be extremely faint, way fainter than the Batigan and Brown proposal. And to give you a sense, at the end of the 10-year survey, at the end of 10 years of LSST, the, the, the co-added point source detection limit is about 26.9 magnitudes. Now, what you would do on this, so, I mean, we're looking for something extremely faint that is moving on the sky, albeit slowly, moving on the sky. So you couldn't just take the 10-year co-added image and look for point of light. What you would have to do is you would have to guess the trajectory of the planet. And so you would guess every possible trajectory, basically line segments, throughout the 10-year co-added LSST image. And so this is called a blind shift and stack search because you what you do is you guess a trajectory, you put in the orbital elements, very important is the distance, which would be somewhere in the 400 AU to 700 AU range, and so that gives you a speed, and then you change the direction. And then you take the frames and you stack them up so, so that the planet, the hypothetical planet, would appear in the same place in that stack. So you move the images slightly so they should all stack up if it were following that trajectory that you guessed. And so you have to do this over the entire image. And of course, that brings your signal to noise down. You are not sensitive anymore to 26.9 magnitude because you're going to get some rate of false positives at that level because you're making billions of guesses. So, you know, something more realistic is let's say a penalty of one magnitude. So maybe you could see a planet down to 25.9. And what do our statistics say in terms of the likelihood of a planet being at that brightness currently? We think that there should be about one. <laughs> so current statistics imply about one planet discoverable at that magnitude limit, 25.9 which again, which would be achieved after the entire, the, the depth to get there is the entire 10 year LCC survey and then a blind shift and stack algorithm running on top of that. But the important thing to note is that LSST only covers half the sky. So if there is one out there that could be detected at this limit, it may very well be in the Northern sky. So, I really hope that we get something similar in the northern sky, either by you know physically moving the Vera Rubin Observatory or uh, doing something to similar depth with the with the Subaru telescope or with another instrument, because you're able to find twice the number of small bodies in the outer solar system, and 
you have twice the chance of finding a captured planet. Now, this thing could be, if it's a capture, it could be in a really, really weird orbit, you know, way outside of the plane of the solar system, right? Right, right. Yeah, it, it would likely be in a quite eccentric orbit, but probably not probably not extremely eccentric. To give you a sense, you know, Parker et al. 2017 showed that about two-thirds of captured objects should be on orbits with eccentricities less than about 0.6. So, but the inclination can be very weird. You know, there isn't a preference for the ecliptic plane like the, the other planets have. And of course, it can be anywhere in its orbit. And so in my paper, I ran a Monte Carlo simulation drawing from these different orbital elements. And, you know, also saying when we observe it is not a privileged time. So it can be anywhere in its orbit and came up with the, you know, distribution of distances at present that way or at any instant in time that way and similarly came up with the distribution of apparent magnitude as a function of distance and number as a function of magnitude that way 